In October of 1947, the Dearborn City Council unanimously approved the purchase of 240 acres of land in Milford, Michigan. This $40,000 real estate transaction was completed with the intent of establishing a year-round private camp for Dearborn residents. The property included a 21-acre spring-fed lake, 1,000 feet of Huron River footage, and a winding trout stream. Camp Dearborn was a dream of Mayor Hubbard's, and he did create Camp Dearborn. And uh, when Mayor O'Reilly was mayor, he knew that that was a real important cog in our recreation's wheel. So he, he spent a lot of time out there personally. When I became mayor, I looked at the camp as a tremendous asset and tried to figure out what were the things that people wanted. We found that people wanted to have golfing opportunities, so we built a 27-hole championship golf course out there. They wanted to have adventure golf for the kids. We built the adventure golf. So we're really trying to reinvent and recreate Camp Dearborn and keep the legacy that Mayor Hubbard started. Anyone who knew Mayor Hubbard knew why he felt so passionately about Camp Dearborn. He built it for the people and for the kids, and he built it for Dearborn, and we were one of a kind. We're the only city in the country that has its own private camp. During the winter of 1947 through the early spring of 1948, Dearborn invested a lot of resources into the development of Camp Dearborn. They began to develop the park around building two lakes. The lake behind us was one of the lakes early on, and they let the water flow down from the spring into that lake, and then they created the main Beach One lake for swimming and so on. And that then later got divided for separate use, and there are two additional lakes that were put in. The first lake, Lake One, the swimming lake, has a really nice, it's got a hydraulic system where they can drain the lake partially and then put in fresh spring water each year. So you have that kind of ability to freshen the lake every year instead of it being just static. And also, they began to dedicate the use. So the swimming lake was Lake One. The sand that's still there today was brought in from the western lakeshore, from Lake Michigan, where the dunes are. They transported truckload after truckload of sand here to build the original beach. A lot of effort was put into this park, and boy, you know, the workers would come out from the city, and they would move hills and create hills. This was all principally flat land. So all the hills we see and all this around us, that was built up with trucks loading in dirt, bringing in dirt, pushing it around. In addition to transforming the land, a bathhouse was constructed, roads were created, two wells were dug, picnic tables and field stoves were purchased and placed on the property. The camp was rapidly taking shape and was finally ready to open to the public on Memorial Day weekend, 1948. Mayor Hubbard sent personal invitations to all Dearborn residents, and that weekend more than 5,000 residents made the 35-mile drive out to see their private camp. When the camp opened, the facility only had 100 picnic tables, 30 metal boats, and was still under construction. The earth movers did not keep visitors away. In fact, that summer the popularity of Camp Dearborn went well beyond anyone's expectations. During the 4th of July weekend, 7,000 Dearbornites flocked to Camp Dearborn to enjoy the holiday. From this point on, camp's popularity grew to the point where everyone in Dearborn wanted to spend time at what had fast become the residents' favorite recreational spot. There was never a doubt about how much residents enjoyed their time at camp because sometimes just getting there required a little effort. People would get up 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning to drive out to camp, especially on a Sunday, because they wanted a spot under a shade tree for their picnic table. Getting out here in, in its heyday was really difficult because by the time, well, before the freeway even, when you came out Grand River, the traffic would back up for miles and miles and miles. And at the gate, all the department heads, the city department heads actually were the ones who staffed the gate. It would be lined up at the gate halfway down to Milford Road and there would be cars along the side of General Motors Road parked off to the side. And later I learned that those were people who didn't live in Dearborn, who were waiting for their Dearborn connection to get there so that they could get in. It used to be bumper to bumper down Grand River, or, um, Milford. And we used to have a man that sold peanuts. I don't know if anybody's ever brought that up. It was like in a little tray like this he'd put over his neck. And Ferris would buy all the peanuts. They were in a bag and pass them out to all his kids and we'd sit there and eat peanuts and everybody would gab and people would get out of their cars and talk because it was all bumper to bumper. No one complained about the traffic jams because they knew it was all worth the wait. 
Once you got to Camp Dearborn, you were guaranteed a day of family fun that you could not find anywhere else. And this place would be packed. Every square inch of the 626 acres had people on it. We actually had the regular canteen, then we had mini canteens in two other spots that sold just, you know, hot dogs, ice cream, that kind of thing, just because the demand was so high. And we had a motorboat lake where you could go on motorboat rides and take skiing lessons and stuff, and then there was another lake where you could bring out your own motorboat and go out on it. And they were small, but they, they were fun. People had a ball. We had kayaks at various times. We had trampolines. We had moonwalks. In those days at the beach, you never found a square inch that wasn't covered with a towel. That beach was crowded because if you were a teenager, there was nowhere else you would be on a Sunday but at Camp Dearborn. That was it. Mayor Hubbard was also known to make frequent trips to camp. He went up every day. He checked it out. After work, he'd put in his time at City Hall. He'd come home for dinner, and he'd come and go out to the car in the summertime, I remember, and he'd say, anyone want to go to camp? Or any, well, let's put it this way, anyone for camp? And all the kids in the neighborhood would say, yeah. So about six or seven of them would pile in the car, and we'd go up, we'd ride out to camp. And uh, he'd buy them all an ice cream cone at night. The mayor wasn't the only one making many trips to camp. Many families made it a part of their weekly routine. My family went on picnics on Sundays for as long as I can remember. And we would do it with other family members my parents, friends, and their kids, and we usually tried to picnic in the same area every week because it was near the beach, near the playground, near the stream where they put the watermelon to keep it cold. Our families used to come out here on Sundays, and we had a mom and pop grocery store. They used to keep it open until 2 o'clock, so a friend of the family, like a cousin, used to pick up everybody's kids. And then my parents would close the grocery store up, and they'd meet us out here and we'd barbecue. There wasn't a person that was anyone that wasn't there. And it was a place to see and be seen. And all the kids from high school and grade school and everything else would line that beach. Its overwhelming popularity was the reason the city continued to buy property and expand the camp. Over the years, the camp grew to be a total of 626 acres of land, which included six lakes totaling 115 acres of the park. One of the camp's most unique amenities, Tent Village, opened in 1954. At that time, there were only 25 tents on wooden floors with four cots and electricity. We were out here the first year of the tents when I was a kid. And I can remember Hubbard walking up a field asking us, well, how do we like it? And I said, oh, we love it, except it's kind of cold. We slept on straw mattresses, and then we used to have to put newspaper between the spring and the mattress so it would get a little warm. Tent Village immediately became popular with Dearborn residents, and to keep up with the high demand, more tents were added. By 1955, the area had grown to house 137, and the demand was growing even faster than Tent Village. I remember Hubbard had this thing, uh, we'd advertise the opening of registrations for the summer, and we'd have people showing up at City Hall 4 o'clock in the afternoon the day before registrations opened. They'd sleep in the hallway of City Hall so they could get their favorite week or two weeks out there. Tent Village was very, very popular. And then as time went on, by the time I left, we had almost 300, and every tent was rented during the summer with sometimes a waiting list of over 1,500. Over the years, there have been many improvements to Tent Village. Campers today still enjoy a private beach, a swimming pool, a heated comfort station, a fully equipped laundromat, and organized recreational activities. While some of the amenities are new, some of these activities have been a tradition at camp for decades. Touchdown every morning, 10 times, not just now and then. Chicken fat back to the chicken and don't be chicken again. No, don't be chicken. We still again. wake up in the morning through chicken fat and the kids are off out and about doing their fishing. Paddle Boat Lake is behind me here. That'll start at about noon. The kids will be out boating, swimming. They're down at the beach already. They'll participate in the activities that we have up at the rec field. They'll be at the pool doing the dance at night. It's all tradition. It's the traditions and the wide variety of activities that have always made camp an exciting place for children. 
they had programmed activities going on practically every hour of the day. And if you're a kid, you never run out of stuff to do. My children did the tie-dyeing, and they would go to the totem pole. They had frog races, turtle races. They used to also show movies. One of the activities my daughter liked the best when she was little was sitting at the pump. Just let everybody but come pump water for her, thinking she was dying of thirst, but she just loved sitting there. They did all of that, and they loved it, and went fishing, of course, and now the grandkids and all of their friends are up here, so they kind of hang around, they just can't wait to come up. Kids today are still excited about going to Camp Dearborn because there are still a lot of fun activities for them to enjoy. We play games, we go to the park, we play sports. We usually play card games, run around, do a bunch of things, and sometimes we go down to the rec center and play some board games. There's like a lot of stuff to do and you don't really get bored. Many of the young campers have their favorite camp activities. Like chess tournaments, we have like different rounds. I like the pool and the canteen. Going to the canteen and dancing, they have all types of dances, like they have the timeline and they have slow dances, and you can just like dance however you want. Dances are not the only tradition where campers have showed off their artistic spirit. They had talent night, and so a lot of our kids participated, and there was a great group. We all would go down and uh, watch the talent night. Dances, shows, and activities are not the only thing children remember about Camp Dearborn. It's the quality time with their family they will remember for their whole lives. I usually spend time with my grandma and we go to the canteen. You're spending time with your family and it's a lot of fun. You're usually outside and you get to see your family more often. There is one long-standing tradition that brings families together at night. People would stay up to 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning just talking. Can you imagine a family together without TV, without a computer, without a movie? Yes, they, they actually sit and talk. And they talk about what's interesting to them and they find out that they're interested in what other people are talking about. So there's a lot of togetherness. They take home when they cherish that. We made a lot of friends out here also. Yes. That's really the tradition of Camp Dearborn. You find it here today we would come out every year and people that we knew would come out with us so you get a whole range of tents that would all be connected they get the same weeks every year they get the same tents every year and that tradition still goes on with families now where the kids came out here and now they're bringing their families the nice part for us was we would usually come with extended family so everybody had their own tent and we were free to get together with our cousins and we would go to the beach every day and swim and then of course when they opened the pool we would start going to the pool and go fishing, and we just had a lot of freedom, go to arts and crafts. And From my own experience, I always thought the benefits for the children were that everybody was relaxed, and we got to see our parents having a nice time. It was just a wonderful way to, to get to know your family and your cousins and your adults and uh, all the adults and the kids and share just a great time. We have wonderful memories at Camp Dearborn. This is the greatest family experience that we have each year. And the cousins and the grandchildren and the kids all love it. At first, you know, when the kids got to be teenagers, they didn't think they would like it. But they like it and now they're coming back with their kids and even the next generation. It's been a great experience at Camp Deer One. Many of the families that spent their vacation at Tent Village enjoyed it so much, they purchased trailers and began spending their time in TV2. We went from tents to my mother using friends' pop-ups, to using their trailers, to getting her own trailer. And we still have that trailer. We have two trailers up here now. As is the case for many Camp Dearborn residents, it's the place where you get to spend time with your family. Everybody had trailers out here. Our cousins had trailers. My two brothers each had a trailer. And my other brother had his boat out here. And he used to take any kid, whether he didn't, if he knew him or not, they would teach him to water ski. Spending so much time at camp gives a family the opportunity to build many memories and enjoy a lot of activities. But everyone has their favorite. At night, going down to watch the kids at the dance, getting our ice cream, we've got to have our ice cream, and coming back and the bonfire or sitting around playing cards or something and 
spending a nice evening. We have our cell phones now, but before there's no phones, no nothing. And it was wonderful. One of the great things about owning a trailer at camp is not only the fact that you can enjoy all the fun camp activities, but you can choose to stay as long as you want, even for the whole summer. Every time, every year when school was out, the next day we were at Camp Dearborn. And we didn't go back until <laughs> it was time to start school again, you know? It was just a fun place. It was a safe place for kids. You can find a better place for kids. They liked it out here. They, they did like it out here. Now, then the grandkids like it, you know? They, there's good memories. And I think that when you camp with your kids, or I don't care if you go fishing with them, or you vacation with your kids, and you're gonna have one-on-one -on -one no matter what. And you need that, and it builds those memories. Creating memories and finding ways to spend quality family time away from the stress of everyday life is one other way Camp Dearborn has served residents. It was like when we could be a family, because when you are caregivers for two mothers, then you need your time alone to be a family. So it was great for the three of us to be here so close to home, we could still take care of the two mothers, still work every day. It was just a beautiful experience. It was wonderful. We had many a parties out here. We had, it was just wonderful. Just a one, camp is not just land, it's experiences. And closing your eyes, you have all these wonderful memories of camp. For many of the people who were fortunate enough to spend a lot of time out at Camp Dearborn, there was nothing that would stop them from continuing that tradition. My mother, when she was sick, before she passed away, she was really sick, but we had to bring her out to camp. She had to come to camp, and we did. One family has found a way to ensure their memories will live on at camp forever. The little maple tree, we needed shade over there. We put this tree in here, and it was about four feet tall. We dug the hole, put it in, and we watered it, and I tell you, I love it. And when I pull up here, it's the first thing I look for my tree, because he's been gone now 12 years, but I still have the tree. We call it Dad's Tree. Camp Dearborn has had a huge impact on many, many families because many families did what we did. They came out for a week or two and they had a group. And that's not normally what uh, too many families put together a vacation. It's too difficult, choosing a place to go, getting hotels, the expense, everything else. So I think that it's had a huge impact on families in, in that way. While many of the memories people have of camp revolve around the time they spent with their families, there are just as many people whose memories are from the weeks they spent at youth camp. This was one of the most cherished experiences available to Dearborn's young residents. Youth camp was great. Kids from ages, I believe seven up to maybe 15 would come out, boys and girls. When we first started, we had two week sessions. They would come for two weeks at a time. And then as years went on, they were just one week sessions and they did everything. Yeah, on Sunday night, you just started out with 200 kids playing capture the flag out in our large field. It was big enough to fit two football fields in it. The next morning they get up and every group went to a different area. We had about 10 different areas. They would just carry out through the day, just between shooting rifles and guns, bows and arrows, the swimming, the canoeing, the sailing. We had a slip and slide that was about 100 yards long down a huge hill. We had a lot of rope swings, we had tree forts. For their two week stay, each camper was assigned a tent. They were nice tents, they had wooden floors, screen sides, canvas top. We could roll the tops up. We had a, two weeks of lots and lots of fun. Each of the campers have special moments they still remember fondly. When they gather all the kids on Saturday nights, it was a powwow with a huge bonfire and you dressed up like Indians and that was pretty unique. We sang songs and we did activities. We had drums and you danced around the campfire and acted like an Indian for a while. One of the things I remember was catching frogs. We went fishing one day. At that time they had big bullfrogs in the pond that was closest to the youth camp. We'd reach down and through the green scum and catch these great big bullfrogs. And then we used our lashing skills to lash together sticks and made a spit and we roasted the frogs and we had frog legs as a special treat for our unit that night. Every day we had different duties. There was a caper chart made out and each group had a different responsibility each day. Of course the favorite was latrine duty when we had to scrub out the outhouses 
And yes, we had outhouses. <laughs> the camp employed counselors that the kids could really learn something from. The counselors we hired were experienced in these different areas. So they could show their expertise and sometimes we'd take them out like to Kensington or to Ryan Stable and the people at those areas were experts in the, the animals in this area or how to handle horses. You just couldn't get things like that in Dearborn or any other city. It just gives people an opportunity that they wouldn't normally have. I think I really got a lot out of it because it was an opportunity to be out on my own away from the family to live with other people, get to know other people. I think any kid in Dearborn, if you mention Camp Dearborn, their eyes will light up and it was a wonderful experience. I mean, there's, there's no other place like it. Many children also headed out to Milford for day camp. Each week, a bus went to every playground in the city of Dearborn where they had an arts and crafts program. And kids could sign up and go out to Camp Dearborn, accompanied by three or four counselors per bus load for no cost and when you got here you were given a safety partner that you were called on every so many minutes to raise your hand of your buddy system. You could go on the paddle boats, you could go fishing, you could go swimming, you went on a hike, you built a campfire and it was just an, uh, an experience that a lot of kids would have not been able to get. And on the way out to camp we all sang all the time, we sang all the old camp songs and after we got there, we divided into groups, and each counselor, maybe two counselors, had a large group. And we would hike down to the boating area, and they had a lot of rowboats there, and we would take the children out in the rowboats and teach them how to row a boat and that sort of thing. Once or twice during the summer, they gave children free rides on the paddle boat. And then when we got back to camp, everybody had lunch, and it was a little, kind of a rest period, really. The kids just kind of took it easy and, and had their lunch. And then we'd go down to the swimming area, there used to be a U-shaped dock that went out into the water. Then they did some art projects too sometimes there. We would do some art things after, after lunch. And uh, it was just a, a wonderful way to spend a day for a child. Taking advantage of the programs that were offered out at camp is a tradition that has been passed on from one generation to another. An experience that parents are happy their children get to share in. And I was talking to my son on the phone and he said, Geez, I can remember being in the parking lot of the Civic Center, sitting on that bus, looking out the window, and you waving with a big smile on your face because I was off to camp. And I said, well, you know, I wasn't smiling because you were leaving. I was smiling because you were going to have as much fun and as many memories for the rest of your life as I did. And he does. He loved camp. Now that I have grandchildren, we've started coming again, and it's kind of funny to watch them because, as my sister said, these kids are doing the same sort of simple fun with one another we did 50 years ago, and they, they love it. And when you hear people talk, they just have the fondest memories of Camp Dearborn. All over the country, really, my sister moved to Virginia, and she ran to somebody. That person was from Dearborn as well, and that person's husband said, "Oh, I always hear about, always hear about Dearborn and Camp Dearborn," <laughs> and they all started laughing. And they said, "Well, you, you'd have to know it, know what people experience. It's it, it really can't be described if people haven't experienced it." Whether you have experienced Camp Dearborn before or you are visiting for the first time, it is still the crowning jewel in Dearborn's recreation system, and well worth the trip.